Hi, this is Yosif Xenogiannis and Manos Pulakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 23 for the manual of non-CTO coronary interventions. This is a case uh, entitled Atherectomy Regret. This was a middle-aged woman who presented with exertional angina and dyspnea. She had a CT angiogram that showed severe disease in the right coronary artery. Importantly, she did have Hodgkin's in the past and he had undergone chemotherapy as well as radiation therapy 36 years prior. Diagnostic coronary angiography confirmed the findings of the CT. There was significant osteo lesion in the proximal right coronary artery. Interestingly, there wasn't significant stenosis on the left coronary system. Therefore, having single vessel disease, the plan was to perform PCI. The lesion was predilated with a 2.5 mm NC balloon. It seemed to expand well, and therefore we placed a 275 by 20 mm drug eluting stent, which appeared to be okay on angiogram after the stent was deployed. We routinely do intravascular ultrasound after we place stents in the ostium. The main reason is to see that the stent actually goes all the way to the ostium of the vessel. And here we saw that the stent was well expanded in this segment, but then when we go close to the ostium, the stent was significantly underexpanded. So essentially, we had uh, an area of underexpansion in the stent that was not appreciable by coronary angiography alone. So essentially, we have now a balloon and dilatable lesion, and uh, although it's not in stent restenosis, it's essentially within the stent. And this is different from de novo lesions that are undilatable because using a therectomy is usually not advised in those lesions due to the risk of complications. So the usual approach is to do high pressure inflations, either with a shorter balloon or with two simultaneously inflated balloons, the so-called confluent balloons. Use body wires, angel sculpt, cutting balloon, chocolate balloons, use laser, potentially with contrast. And if everything does not work, the, as a last resort, is to do rotational atherectomy, and, uh, and another option is to do subintimal lesion crossing and crossing from the outside. And in any scenario, it's very important to do intravascular imaging. In this particular case, we would not have known that the patient had stent under expansion had we not done intravascular ultrasound. So we did multiple balloon inflations. This is an example of two smaller balloons that were inflated up to 28 atmospheres. The way to size this is by adding the diameters of the two balloons and multiplying by two-thirds. For example, if it's a 2.5 and a 2.5, both together would be 5, multiplied by two-thirds, about 3.3. This is the so-called finesse law. Another option is to do laser. And what's important is when laser is done with simultaneous contrast injection, there is essentially the bubble formation. This is what happens with the laser in water, nothing much is happening. But then once we do it in a contrast solution, there is cavitation and bubble formation. And when it's done in pure contrast, there is tremendous formation of bubbles and macrocavitation effect. So we did that contrast with laser, but uh, unfortunately it did not work. So after multiple attempts, we decided to do rotational therectomy. This was done with a 1.5 millimeter burr, and the patient did have some bradycardia and ST segment depressions, as well as hypotension. However, afterwards, the patient recovered and repeat uh, intravascular ultrasound did so that uh, we finally did have expansion on the formerly under expanded stent. Of course, the stent was disrupted there was some disruption further distally, um, so we had to place additional drug eluting stents to cover a larger portion of the right coronary artery. This uh, provided a nice result. We did do a post-PCI FFR that was essentially 1, 0 0.99, and a nice final result was achieved. Several potential uh, lessons from this case. The first is that um, preventing an underexpanded stent is critical because it's much easier to do a therectomy if there is no stent than if there is a stent in place. Also, previous radiation therapy might be a factor to consider when treating a lesion. 
Those lasers may be very hard to dilate. Therefore, doing intravascular imaging after balloon angioplasty might be advisable and also potentially using atherectomy more often as the upfront strategy may be the way to go. When it comes to having a balloon undilatable stent, so essentially under expanded stent, there is an algorithm to follow. Typically, the first step is high pressure balloon inflations, either single or multiple balloons. The second is to put a body wire. The third is to use uh, various scoring balloons like the angiosculpt, the cutting balloon and the chocolate. The fourth is to use laser and potentially laser with simultaneous contrast injection that creates the micro cavitary effect that may modify the plaque and expand the stent. And if this doesn't work, as a fifth option is to do a therectomy. We typically will not do orbital atherectomy, which is contraindicated in stents, but do rotational atherectomy, which, as you saw in this case, has the risk of embolization and creating disruptions. And the very last and sixth uh, potential approach, if everything else fails, is to go subintimal and essentially crush the stent from the outside and expand it that way. Thank you very much.